Jesus doesn't think much of us modern Christians, especially when compared to the Christians of ancient times, the Christians of the Colosseum, the martyrs. And in this dictation of March the 5th, 1944, which I'm going to read from, he makes his views pretty clear, but he does give us a remedy. So we need not be too downcast. This is the um, notebooks of 1944 of Maria Valtorta. There's two others. The first one's 1943. The succeeding one goes from 1945 to 1950. And only last year, 2022, was published the Quadernetti, the little notebooks from which I've been reading um, in previous videos that I've made. So to commence this dictation of March the 5th, 1944, Jesus says, O oh, you 20th century Christians who hear the stories of my martyrs as if they were fables and say to yourselves, it can't be true. How can it be? After all, they too were men and women. This is a legend. Know that it is not a legend, but history. And if you believe in the civic virtues of the ancient Athenians, Spartans and Romans, and feel your spirit's exaltation over the acts of valour and greatness by civil heroes, why don't you want to believe in these supernatural virtues? And why don't you feel your spirit's exaltation and spur it towards a select imitation when hearing the account of the acts of greatness and valour by my heroes? After all, you say, they were men and women. Of course, they were men and women. You state a great truth and give yourselves a great condemnation. They were men and women, and you are beasts. Degraded from likeness to God, from God's filiation, to the level of animals, guided only by instinct and allied by marriage with Satan. They were men and women. They had become men and women again by means of grace. Just as the first man and the first woman were in the earthly paradise, it is, it is as the Apostle Paul states, I fear none of these things, nor do I place any value on my own life, provided that I fulfill my mission and the ministry received from the Lord Jesus to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. Acts 20, 24. My martyrs were eager to fulfill their mission and the ministry received from me to sanctify the world and bear witness to the gospel. They were concerned about nothing else. By the grace living in them and protected by them with greater care than they showed for the apple of their eyes and for the life they cast aside with cheerful promptness, knowing they were casting away a corruptible sheath to acquire a new one of measureless value. They'd become men and women again, no longer beasts. And they lived and acted as men and women, children of the heavenly father. As Paul says, they did not seek gold or silver or clothing from anyone, but rather let themselves be stripped and voluntarily strip themselves of all wealth, even of life, to follow me on earth and in heaven. With their own hands, the apostle continues, they provided for the needs of themselves and others. Acts 20, 34. They gave themselves life and brought others to life. 
by working they brought aid to those ill with that tremendous illness which is to live outside of the true faith and devoted their whole self to this end by offering affections, blood, life, labours and all things recalling my words which I uttered to you three days ago. And by the way, Jesus is there referring to another dictation to Maria Valtorta, which I won't go into. The words which I uttered three days ago, to give is to receive. To give is better than to receive. Those words which today, when I had you open the book of Acts 20, verse 35, you read with a start, for you remembered having heard them shortly before, and you rushed to look them up. And on finding them, you wept, for you received a confirmation that it is I who speak. Just to interrupt there, Jesus speaking to Maria Valtorta, to say he motivated her to open the book of Acts at the place where, which he'd been talking about as a confirmation that yes, it is truly Jesus who's speaking to her. Jesus continues, yes, it is I, do not fear. You don't even realize the truths you become a channel for, like the small bird on the branch that happily sings the song of God that God has placed in it, in its little throat for millennia and does not know why those specific notes come out and not others. And it does not know that with them it is saying its name and the name of its creator. So you repeat the word that speaks in you and don't even know how deep it is in its manifestations. But remain like this, a child. I love children so much. You have seen this. And just to interrupt there, that's Jesus referring back to another dictation um, of Maria Valtorta, which is actually footnoted as having been given on February the 7th of 1944. And I looked at that, reminded myself of that, and that is where Jesus is, um, gives a vision, which I, I'm not sure it's actually in the poem of the man God itself, uh, another scene of Jesus's earthly life, um, where his devotion to children is shown very starkly. So Jesus carries on and the next sentence is very interesting, worth noting. When he talks about children, you've not seen me laugh except with them. They were my joy as man, my mother and my disciple were my joy as God man and as teacher. I think, just to interrupt again, I think when he says my disciple, he's referring to St. John, who is the beloved disciple, as St. John's gospel uh, implies to us. He doesn't say, I am John, but it's pretty clear it is St. John. And we learn from Maria Valtorta, that yes, that is the beloved disciple, that is St. John. So Jesus continues. My mother and my disciple were my joy as God-man and as teacher, the father, my joy as God, but children were my joyous relief on the very bitter earth. Remain like this, a child, your saviour, cuffed by so many men, needs to refresh his cheeks on the cheeks of children. He needs to rest his brow on heads that are loving and without malice. Come little John to your Jesus. And as I've said before, little John is a nickname Jesus uses for Maria Valtorta, because like Saint John, the beloved disciple, the apostle of love, she is similar. And always remain a child for me. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those able to have a child's soul and receive the truth with the trusting promptness of a child. It is I, do not fear. 
I who speak to you and I who bless you. Go in peace, little John. Tomorrow I shall send John to you. And that ends that day's dictation. And the John to whom Jesus is referring is St. John the Apostle himself. And in fact, on March the 6th, St. John the Apostle does appear and speak to Maria Valtorta. But I'll just finish this video by remarking about how Jesus emphasises how children are his joy, how much they mean to him. And if you read the poem of the man God, you can just see that again and again. They do provide joy to him. And that, it may be worth also saying, it's a bit unfortunate that we have to say this, but this being the 21st century, childhood is under attack in the Western world like it's never been before. It is being corrupted before our eyes. And those of us who are old enough to know who were raised in the 1970s, say, or the 1980s, we would never have thought that the British population or any population in the Western world would just sit back and observe this and not do anything about it. And yet we see that in schools in Britain, in schools in the United States, very much emphasised there, but it's happening in Britain as well, that ch things are being done that are corrupting children, stripping away their innocence. Because we were all, no matter what we are now, we were innocent once, and we know there's corruption that has always gone on, sadly, often in families, secretly, that strips innocence away from children. But by and large, in normal family life, children in my generation were growing up being quite innocent for a long time. Technology has made that a problem because, of course, children are accessing pornography in a way my generation couldn't do. Um, so it was accessible, you know, but now it's on the mobile phones, which children who are very young have. So that's a real problem. But I could understand the technological problem that could be addressed. It could easily be addressed with technological measures. But we can't trust our government when it proposes to address um, online problems um, by its proposals of censorship because we just can't trust our governments. They've been untrustworthy. It's been evident for a long time now. But that's something we put to one side for a moment. What need not detain us is the fact that we could immediately and should immediately stop the things which are being done within schools and on television to strip away the innocence of children. And we could simply say things which are being done to corrupt children. And I won't, because I want to put this on YouTube, I won't be explicit about the things that I mean, but I think if you've not been um, living with your head underground for the past 10 years, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, and I'm only mentioning it because when Jesus emphasises what children mean to him, that is really a warning as well to our civilization that Jesus is the just judge and there will be repercussions, there will be consequences of what is now going on in our society, which when I grew up was not perfect. We had the Abortion Act when I was a little boy, a great crime against children before they're even children, before they reach infancy. But put that to one side, generally once born, children were treated like they'd always been. But we've gone down several notches in our civilization. And Jesus is observing everything. And so we just have to wonder when will the axe fall? But for that, but apart from that, let's end this video on simply the statement that Jesus says 
to Maria Valtorta and applies to us all. Be a child because the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. Doesn't mean be naive, be stupid. It means be like a child, as Jesus says in this dictation. Like the early Christians were. And if we can be like them, as they were like children, martyrs, suffering, giving all for the faith, they will be making Jesus happy. Because still, just because he's left the earth doesn't mean his heart does not need consoling. The sacred heart needs consoling, as the angel of Fatima said to the three children, Jacinta Francesco and Lucia. Console your God.